We are Robin and Steve. I left off at the Western Australian Circus Festival, where, if I wasn't teaching or performing, I got to be taught and entertained by some of the world's best. I didn't film much, and there was so much to see. Best job ever. And I had one more stop within Australia before I headed back to the boat. This is Fitzroy Island, or Gubba. Steve and I had sailed here in 2021, but this time we got the Fitzroy Flyer Ferry here, with family, including my mum. Mum and I went to the Turtle Rehabilitation Centre. This green turtle was recovering from a contagious disease called coccidia and is being looked after here until it recovers. After a beautiful day hanging out with family on Fitzroy Island, we headed back to the mainland and Mum showed us some of her favourite places closer to where she lives. It was a short but sweet visit and then it was back via Wellington to Picton to the boat. sailed, walked and kayaked a lot within Queen Charlotte Sound and now it was time to head out around the corner to Polaris Sound. Here's a highly sophisticated recap of our journey. We took our time leaving Queen Charlotte Sound, even allowing time for some walks. In true New Zealand style, we could get everything from glassy calm to 58.5 knots. That's 108 kilometres per hour. Too much. But as we popped out into the Cook Strait, it was pretty beautiful. And heading towards slack tide. Next, we took a little shortcut. It was supposed to be the turn of the current, it was deep enough, and two other similar boats had gone through just before us. But this got the prize for one of the silliest patches of water we've ever seen. was still current here and we were sailing forward and yet not moving. Not a good feeling when there are standing waves all around you. here in perfect conditions. This must get pretty nasty. Next time we will just not take a shortcut and go all the way around. But luckily it was only a short patch of water. Just like that we were through. And it was calm from then on. As we sailed below Forsyth Island to Ketu Bay. Here the water was much clearer than in Queen Charlotte Sound, so we christened our new water maker. Here's where the thick brine is shot out of our boat. Just like where we'd come from, the winds here seem to do anything at any time. But when it's calm, it's so beautiful. As a late birthday present, I'd gotten Steve a half-size guitar. And here's his first try. Later, he even learnt the words. This is Ketu Bay with its pebbly beach. I didn't film it, but here we saw a weka foraging in the shallows. 
soaking wet. We didn't know Weckers ate seafood. Next it was off to Port Ligar. I got to see my first New Zealand seal. Not in natural settings, but relaxing on a fish farm. Then it was off to Waihinao Bay, Bulwa, where we could take a nice walk along the road, or around the road, depending on the sheep. With its steep climbs, New Zealand is good for our cardiovascular systems and has some great views. Next stop, Richmond Bay, where I was very surprised to see a wobby gong gracefully gliding by our boat. We really haven't seen many animals here. So this was a treat. In many anchorages, there is nowhere to walk. So we were off to find an anchorage with a road. The surrounding country was pretty trashed by over a century of sheep farming. But the treeless land does make for good views. We were in the land of mussel farms and pine plantations and sheep on bare hills. But our next stop was to the world's end, a dramatic name for a beautiful patch of forest deep within the Polaris Sound and with some excellent walking tracks. We had to work a little harder to get a view here but on balance, we prefer having trees and cicadas. It was off to Wilson's Bay next, where we tried to take a walk. We got a decent way along before we were stopped in our tracks. It's hard to capture the scale of this landslip. There was no going around it or through it. So we turned around and dined at the restaurant, which to my delight has a cat. Meet Fat Guts the cat. <laughs> Here is the landslip as we sailed past. Near Nidia Bay, we met an eel. Long fin eels live in fresh water for most of their lives. Then after 25 to 80 years, they travel about 5,000 kilometers to the South Pacific to breed and die. We stopped at the trackside resort for a cup of tea and what a gorgeous place to stop. Not far from there, we met another eel. Both eels we met were clearly curious studying us with their beautiful blue eyes. On our way out, we sheltered again at Wilson's Bay as some bad weather passed over. Then it was off to Derville Island, Rangitoto Kite Tonga. On the way, we saw seals. It's got a fish. There are some decent currents around here, giving the water surface some cool textures. Port Hardy was our first stop but we spent most time at Cape Grenville, Mill Arm, which most of the time we had to ourselves. We took a long kayak trip to get to where the creek flowed into the sea. opportunity to have a good freshwater swim. It was brisk but most refreshing. There are no walking tracks here, so I did other things to get some exercise. This is actually in fast motion. I held this one for a while. 
We kayaked back to the boat past some cool rock formations, filmed yet again with a grubby lens. Still grubby. As I do a little map recap, prepare yourselves for some amazing news. Are you ready for the news? I can now draw a dotted line using my computer. Yep, I'm a lifelong learner. Anyway, that dotted line took us to Mill Arm. If you know me at all, by now you'll know that on a calm morning like this, I just have to dangle. We'll leave the Rangitoto area and actually hoist all three sails for the first time this year. We'll check out Nelson, the Abel Tasman area and meet some New Zealand fur seals before heading up the west coast of New Zealand.